Hello and welcome. You are watching UATV News with me, Ksenia Buhai. First, this hour, bilateral trade during the coronavirus crisis, as well as Poland's participation in the privatization of Ukrainian enterprises. Presidents of Ukraine and Poland made important economic decisions during today's meeting. Our correspondent knows what other topics were touched upon and how the experts assess the results of the negotiations. This is Sanjay Duda's first visit to Ukraine after his re-election as president and his second meeting with Volodymyr Zelensky in 2020. Duda was hosted at the Mariinsky Palace, the official ceremonial residence of the president of Ukraine in Kyiv. After the official ceremony, the presidents held face-to-face -face negotiations. They discussed the process of resolving the situation in the east of Ukraine. I very much appreciate your personal attention to Ukraine, a clear position on its sovereignty and territorial integrity, and the understanding that international pressure and sanctions on the Russian Federation must continue until full the occupation of the entire territory of Ukraine, including the Crimean Peninsula. Poland will chair the OSC in 2022. I assure that the issues of Ukraine, its sovereignty and borders will be on the agenda. Ukraine can count on Polish support. Poland really wants to be an active participant of, if not the Normandy format, then some alternative to the Normandy format. One of the main topics of the talks is the development of economic cooperation between Ukraine and Poland. Last year the trade exchange amounted to 7.5 billion euros, 1,200 Polish enterprises operate in Ukraine. This year volumes have decreased as a result of closure of our economies and a coronavirus pandemic. I'm convinced that we have to do everything so that as few enterprises from the Polish and Ukrainian sides as well as joint ones suffer losses. The countries agreed to expand Poland's access to the privatization process in Ukraine. According to experts, most of all Poland is attracted by energy, infrastructure and the digital sphere. These investments are beneficial for Ukraine as well. If Warsaw now gets access to the privatization of Ukrainian state-owned enterprises, it is only natural that then we will be able to build chains of enterprises that will be sponsored by the European Union, because they will be part of the primary project, which includes only members of the European Union. The presidents also discussed the issue of energy security in Europe. Thank you for the strong position of both the President and the entire Poland on the Nord Stream 2 project and Gazprom's monopoly on the European market. Poland is the main importer of American liquefied gas. They export exactly American liquefied gas to other European countries. They are definitely not interested in launching Nord Stream 2. In this case, they are Ukraine's economic allies. On Tuesday, Volodymyr Zelensky and Andrzej Duda will visit Odessa, where they will take part in the Ukrainian-Polish Economic Forum. The presidents will talk to business representatives and discuss joint infrastructure projects. Reported by Vadim Kramer, UATV News. For more than 420 new cases of COVID-19 have been registered in Ukraine over the past day, the largest number of cases confirmed in Kharkiv, Sumy, Poltava and Khmelnytsky regions. Since the beginning of the pandemic in Ukraine, COVID-19 has been detected in 265 southern Ukrainians. Meanwhile, early vacation for school children will start from October 15th. Students will switch to distance learning. The European Union expressed extreme concern over the reports of ceasefire violations in unrecognized Republic of Nagorno-Karabakh and called on the sides to adhere the silence regime strictly. This is taught in this statement by the European Union's diplomatic chief. See more in this story. The number of settlements taken under control by Azerbaijani troops in Armenia-occupied Nagorno-Karabakh is growing. The day before, other military liberated several villages in the Khojavand and Fizuli districts and nine villages of the Jabril district, along with the city of Jabril. Totaled up, 40 settlements have been taken over by Azerbaijani troops, President of Azerbaijan said. 
Fair to say that the triumphant Azerbaijani troops reach combat successes every day. I can say that today several settlements are under our control, which is have not yet entered territories, since there is no military point in this. But after a certain time we will announce new achievements. Armenia and Azerbaijan exchanged delegations of the ceasefire violations in Nagorno-Karabakh. Armenia reports artillery shelling. Yerevan announces the annihilation of 200 Azerbaijani soldiers. Baku reports the loss of 300 Armenian army men. Armenia also states shooting down of Azerbaijani drones and a fighter jet. In addition, Armenia reiterates blame accusations of Turkey for supporting Azerbaijan. The Azerbaijani Air Forces operate Su-25 fighter jets along the border with the air support of F-16 fighter jets of the Air Force of Turkey. Air Defense Units of Defense Army of Artsakh shot down one Su-25 attack aircraft in the northeastern direction. Ganja, the second largest Azerbaijani city, suffers after the missile hit and left the residential building destroyed. Nine dead, 34 wounded. Citizens have taken to streets to honor the victims. About 400 residents came to see deceased compatriots to their final journey. I hope nobody ever faces things the people of Azerbaijan has seen. We have been living this tyranny for 30 years. One of my brother's houses are destroyed. His son and his wife are wounded. His older son is on the front line. What can I say? God forbid anyone living a day like this. We believed in the ceasefire. On the 10th of October, with the mediation of Kremlin, combating parties agreed on the humanitarian ceasefire. But in fact, the truce was over before it has begun. The sides accused each other of violations almost immediately after the agreement. As of today, Azerbaijan reports new shelling right from the morning. According to Baku, it strictly adheres to the ceasefire regime. At the same time, the Armenian side reports an enemy offensive. In an interview with CNN International TV channel, Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev confirmed that Azerbaijan uses Turkish drones in the conflict zone, but does not use cluster munition. He noted that Turkey plays a stabilizing role. However, Armenians disagree with this. Thousands protested near the Turkish embassy in Los Angeles. The European Union called on the sides to cease fire and return to peaceful negotiations under the auspices of the OSC Minsk Group. Reported by Vadim Kramer and Nick Starkov, UATV News. Numerous marches of pensioners were held in Minsk, Brest, Gomel, Grodno, Mogilev and Lida. In the capital, right police used tear gas and firecrackers against the demonstrators. In the central Belarus city of Grodno, roughly five dozens of senior citizens took up streets with flowers. Protests in Belarus continue shaking streets for the second consecutive months after the presidential elections. Most countries did not recognize Lukashenko as the legitimate president. <laughs> Alexander Lukashenko is brought to the EU sanctioning list. The Foreign Minister's Council approved the relevant decision in Luxembourg. 40 Belarusian officials responsible for the rigging of election results and human rights violations are enlisted. Food from Lukashenko regime. The Lukashenko regime continues to exercise violence. We still see arrests of peaceful demonstrators. That's why we will have to consider how to react. I propose to pave the way for another sanctions package, and Lukashenko should be one of the people on the sanctions list. Belarus Interior Ministry released a video statement warning that police and military forces can use firearms against demonstrators. To keep order in the country, the footage appeared the next day after the massive crackdown against Belarus peaceful rallies with more than 700 detentions.
Сотрудники органов внутренних дел. The officers of the Internal Affairs Ministry and the servicemen of the internal troops will use the riot control weapons and firearms if needed. Protests, which have shifted largely to Minsk, have become organized and extremely radical. Evidence of this can be seen in the protests that occurred in the capital last Sunday. During the day and evening, they included rocks, bottles, knives and chunks, while at night they included barricades and burning tires. This has nothing in common with peaceful protests. Ukrainian schools start testing electronic class registers and diaries. The innovation is planned to ease teachers' work, while children and their parents will get more information. Our correspondent will tell you more. Ukrainian schools started testing electronic class registers and diaries. From now on, parents are able to monitor their kids' attendance and progress, while children can get the assignments online, monitor changes in the schedule, etc. This is especially convenient when transferring to temporary distance learning. Everything will be automatically displayed in the electronic register. Parents will also have access to it and will be able to see grades and homework to be done. It will be possible to monitor the attendance. This is very important as well. Parents will see whether the kid is at school or not. Teacher's work will also become easier as well. First of all, teachers will get the opportunity to work not only at school but also at home. Let us check the ready tasks and put the grades into the electronic class register. This is one of the benefits. Don't forget that we live in a time of pandemic. If we go for distance learning, then the teacher can assess the student. At present, electronic class registers are tested by 52 schools throughout Ukraine. According to director of the Zaporizhia Sich Collegium, the platform is simple and convenient. It is great that we received specific instructions. We got to know how to work in this system. We talked to people who have already worked with this technology. These things are our future, and it seems to me that it would be unwise to refuse. And my role is to motivate children and teachers together with parents. After pilot testing is over, the registers will become available to all educational institutions throughout the country. Besides, schools that will employ e-registers on a regular basis will be able to abandon paper registers. The Minister of Education is preparing the amendments to a number of regulatory documents. Reported by Vadim Kramer, UATV News. The most visited ice show in the world, Holiday on Ice, was founded 77 years ago in the USA, famous artists, singers and figure skaters participated in it. Among them, skater Katarina Witt, disco group Bonnie M, singers Patricia Koss, Chris DeBourg, Thomas Anders and others. Ukrainians have also contributed to show. Our correspondent will tell you more about Ukrainians walking in the holiday on ice. Figure skater from Dnipro Dmitro Maltsev worked as a coach at the end of his sports career. The invitation to participate in the Holiday on Ice show became his lucky ticket. When you perform in Holiday on Ice, it means the hole is 75% is full. A lot of people look at you and admire. In the ice show, skaters have the opportunity to perform complex and risky elements that are prohibited in official tournaments but are loved by the audience. In the show you can do a lot of different elements that cannot be done according to our rules and competitions. Four more Ukrainians have performed with Dmitro. Besides him, one more Ukrainian, Bohdan Levko, is responsible for the technical design of the show, which is touring around the world. What you see here is the standard uh, ice. We build the ice. Uh, our ice is about 18 meters 60 wide and 42 meters long. That's what you see here. Um, um, and uh, building the ice from, uh, um, from, from nothing. We have seven trucks for the, the production and two trucks for ice equipment. So all, all the whole show which you will see inside is packed in the, in the seven trucks. But one of the most welcomed participants of the show is the Olympic champion, Ukrainian now performing for Germany, Olena Savchenko. Ona... She is the main character. Everyone knows her. It's very, very cool to perform with her on the same stage. 
The ice show is suspended for the period of the quarantine. They plan to resume performances in a year. Reported by Vadim Kramer, UATV News. That was our final story this hour. Thank you for watching. Stay tuned. More updates on our official website, YouTube, Facebook and Twitter pages.